People who have cut other people out. What was the final nail in the coffin? My first year of university I found out my mum had a lesion in the center of her brain and the amount of fluid and pressure on her skull required immediate treatment. She was in hospital receiving treatment for weeks while I tried to navigate my studies and living away from home for the first time. I was a mess of anxiety and stress for months. During this time one of my very close friends continually got angry at me for not giving her enough attention despite never contacting me to check on my mother's situation or how I was coping, but I was expected to check in on her constantly and initiate all contact. I just deleted her number and unfriended her. My mother, brother, and sister are all incredibly toxic people, but I never cut them out because they're family. Then the stuff really hit the fan. When I was getting married, at our Jack and Jill party, my mother was taking tons of pictures, as expected, but they were of me and my brother, me and my dad, just me, me my brother and my dad, etc. She didn't want my wife in any of them. I spoke up and said that my future wife should be in these pictures. It's her wedding day too. My wife, who was understandably upset, walked away from the weird photography session. My wife and I decide to go to the backyard area and hang out with her cousin and stepbrother. My cousin and his GF join us. Things get more fun. We are joking around, having a good time. Then my mom and brother come outside extremely drunk. It was like 3pm. My mom starts up with taking more pictures without the bride in them. So I speak up again. My mom shushes me and slaps the back of my head. My wife then says my mom can enjoy her little family reunion photos and then goes back inside. I follow to make sure she's okay. I get in conversation with her, her mom, aunt, and other family members of hers. We calm down and move on. We talk about getting ice cream at a place down the street. I go back outside to ask people if they want to get ice cream, as most weren't causing issues. Just my mom and brother, before I say anything. My very drunk brother starts shouting screw your wife, screw her family, and began charging at me, but was caught by my dad and cousin who held him back. He was of course kicked out. My mom left with him in tears. My dad, my parents are divorced, and don't associate with each other at all. Apologized to everyone, and left out of embarrassment. Wedding day comes. My brother is no longer my best man and is not invited, my sister is here from the other side of the country, the ceremony goes perfectly, my sister refuses to attend the pictures being taken of family and wedding party outside, during the reception, my wife, friends, some of my wife's family, and I are busy dancing on the dance floor, we notice my sister crying and walking around from table to table, we ignore it, as we expected her to try something dumb at our wedding, we find out from someone, that my sister was trash talking my wife in the bathroom. We don't want to deal with drama on our big day. So we have the person in charge of the wedding hall slash supervising the reception staff talk to her about her behavior. She told us we could during the wedding planning process. My sister freaks out and acts all offended. She and my mom then stage a walkout protest of our wedding. Taking a large majority of my aunts, uncles and cousins with them. Not all thankfully. To this day, it's been 4 years, I haven't spoken to anyone who walked out. I cut my biological dad completely off, because he just didn't try. When I was younger I cut contact with him, because he didn't believe me. When I told him his new wife was abusing me, and my sister, I petitioned for my parents custody agreement, to be changed and everything to protect me, and my sister. We didn't see him again as minors. When we were adults he reached out to me and expressed regret at not being there for us and wanted to reconnect. We, me, sister, and him met for dinner twice and then he just started not showing up. I stopped telling my sister we were even supposed to be meeting him because she was so disappointed that he flaked and just took her out myself. Knowing he wouldn't show, I told him after like the fifth time that he clearly didn't care enough to even let us know he wasn't gonna show, so I wanted nothing to do with him. He replied in some apologetic way, but I left him on read. Fast forward about 6 years, I got married, and my husband has a lot of regrets about his estranged father dying, before they could reconnect, so I reached out to my B.O. dad again. No plans were made to meet, but we did chat occasionally, until it became just me initiating conversation and him not ever reaching out to me first. I stopped sending him messages about 5 months after I got married. 
I've been married 3 years, and haven't heard from him even once since. After nearly 50 years of friendship, my idiot friend ruined a road trip, and almost got us arrested in the process. It started a few hours into the trip, when a really bad thunderstorm broke out. So bad that even with the windshield wipers going at top speed, it was really hard to see. He was driving my car in the left lane going 17 phone, 112 kilometers per hour, and I asked nicely for him to slow down. He wanted to pass the huge semi on our right who was sending up a wall of water making it even harder to see. I asked twice more for him to slow down, until I finally started screaming at him, to which he took offense. A few hours later we pulled into a gas station in South Carolina. Friend pulls out his one hitter, and prepares to get high. We're in the south, in a state, where weed is illegal, and there are rednecks parked on both sides of us. I told him to wait, until we were away from all those people. He laughed and told me I was being silly. I had to basically throw a fit to get him to wait until we could drive somewhere quiet. Mind you, this is a man in his 60s and he was acting like a rebellious 12 year old. I pointed out that he was putting me and my car in legal jeopardy which was not a risk I was willing to assume. Strike 3. At the end of the day we stopped for the night at a crappy motel. A non-smoking motel with smoke detectors in the rooms. I had my back turned, and he lights up in the motel room. Did I not make myself clear back at the gas station? So we got into a verbal altercation. He accused me of being a killjoy, paranoid, seeing danger around every corner. I told him that a good friend respects the boundaries of their friends, and if it's a choice between the person who is willing to take a risk and the one who would prefer not to, you have to go with the one who doesn't want to risk their safety. He didn't agree with me. Unfortunately this was a 10 day trip, and we had a lot of driving to do. I was a real B most of the time, because he just didn't get why I was angry, and he wouldn't apologize. I almost dropped him off at an airport, so I didn't have to drive back with him. After we got home, he kept emailing me trying to rekindle a friendship. After lots of emails back and forth he finally sort of understood why I was so mad at him, and he apologized. But I practically had to dictate the apology and he just parroted my words which appeared to me that he still didn't get it. And I don't need people like this in my life, who don't respect reasonable boundaries and make me feel unsafe. I'm the youngest of seven. My dad married three times. First marriage, three daughters. Second marriage, my sister and then myself. Third marriage, two grown stepsons. We had a massive schism in my family when I was 12 that resulted in my four sisters no longer speaking to my father, largely instigated by my half-sister who I will call C. Consequently I had no contact with most of my sisters or my birth mother for 15 years. After some rough teenage years, I went away to university, dropped out and ended up coming back home. C had made some steps to make amends with my dad and adopted mother. So I tried to rebuild a relationship with her, moved into an apartment where she lived across the back lane, so we would hang out once in a while and things were okay. C has bipolar disorder, and frequently goes off her medication, or combines it with alcohol, leading to violent outbursts. At one point she and her then boyfriend were constantly getting into violent arguments, and I was doing my best to stay out of them. After one particularly bad argument, I bought her boyfriend a greyhound ticket, just to get them away from each other. She came over fuming, and punched me in the face, breaking my noise. Couple days later I got an eviction notice as the only other tenant had complained to the leasing company. I was in a really bad spot, and ended up sleeping on a friend's couch for 6 months. C offered to take care of my cat as I couldn't take him to my friend's place. Mid-February, on a minus 40 C night, I found my cat sitting outside the back of our store. She put him outside, and forgot about him, and through some miracle he managed to find his way to me. Despite this, I tried to maintain a relationship with her, because I wanted to be in the lives of my niece and nephew. One year I bought them Gamma Boys for their birthdays, only to find out she almost immediately took them away, and pawned them. Flash forward a few years, my two oldest sisters died a couple months apart, and in the course of grieving, I was able to build a relationship again with my birth mother and other sister. C took it especially hard, and I did what I could to help her deal with it. I got really sick in 2014, and it turns out I had undiagnosed celiac disease. So I spent a year and a half of barely being able to stay awake, 
and being massively malnourished. Before I got diagnosed, my birth mother and sister were the only reason I survived. They brought me food and helped me navigate my way out of being on disability. In 2016, on her birthday, I was going to take my birth mother out for lunch. She messaged me in the morning that she wasn't feeling well and we'd have to do it another day. A few days later, when she wasn't answering messages and hadn't turned up at work, the police did a wellness check and she'd had a massive stroke and passed away. I sent C a message on Facebook breaking the news. She didn't respond all day. Finally, exhausted, I passed out around 2 a.m. Woke up several hours later to a flurry of messages with C freaking out because we were going to steal all our birth mother's money. She didn't have any and was actually heavily in debt. We started working on funeral arrangements and found out C had contacted the largest funeral home in the area and set up a very very expensive funeral plan. C didn't have money either and had been on social assistance or disability for most of her adult life. She expected us to pay for it. None of our very well off. After another flurry of Facebook messages accusing myself and my other sister, I told C she was a garbage person and I wanted nothing to do with her. We ended up getting mom cremated and had a small service at the senior center she worked at. C and her now adult kids raided mom's apartment and took basically everything of value. The only thing I took from her possessions was a cheap metal lighter 